Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a deck builder's toolkit? This is a question that is typically asked by players who are new to the game. Still, even intermediate and experienced players sometimes wonder if there's value to be had in purchasing a toolkit. Let's take a look. The Deck Builder's Toolkit provides you with four booster packs. Here we see the M15 Toolkit providing a Dragon's Maze, Born of the Gods, Theros, and M15 pack. The MSRP on a toolkit is $20. Thus, for the cost of five booster packs, you are getting four booster packs, plus a handful of extras. Are those extras worth $4? Let's start by talking about land. I feel very strongly that land should not be something held up to much, if any, practical value. Anyone other than brand new players should have collected more land than they can ever use. Granted, a brand new player would have no land, and in order to build a deck they would need land, and the deck builder's toolkit gives them enough land to be good no matter what colors they choose, so I'll allow that it is in the spirit of the product, but I am still hesitant to consider this particularly worthwhile. If you have any friends that are already players of this game, surely they are overflowing with land and can at least loan you 20 mountains. Nonetheless, this much land bought by itself at a game store is typically about 4 to $5. So purely financially speaking, the Deck Builder's Toolkit is at least giving you your money's worth, and then a little extra. What else do you get? A selection of commons, uncommons, and five rares. In the 2015 set, these five rares, while still standard legal, cannot be found in booster packs or boxes. This exclusivity is rather diminished by the fact that at least four out of five of them will never see standard play. As for the commons and uncommons, these are allegedly slightly random from box to box, although that randomness seems minimal at best. Looking at this box's contents, we see the following. Notice that there is no more than two of each common or uncommon, and that mostly it is just one of each. Can a player, starting from scratch, really build a deck with only one to two of each card? So, in order to buy all of this individually, you'd be spending more than $20. But does that mean this toolkit is worth it? Perhaps we should reframe the question. Should I buy a deck builder's toolkit if I am a new player? Is this the best use of your $20 if you are relatively new to the game? Let's establish a few basics. Let's assume you aren't overflowing with cash. Let's assume you are new and have little to no cards in your collection. Let's assume you know the very basics of how to play and now wish to begin playing regularly. What's the goal for a player like this? I would say that the goal for such a player is to have at least one deck that they can take to Friday Night Magic, other standard store tournaments and events, as well as events like game day. That's the next step on this player's journey. So can the Deck Builder's Toolkit get you to that next step? No. You don't build decks with one to two of each card. This is basic deck building 101. Even a budget or beginner's deck for standard should be running three to four of most cards. Someone trying to build a deck for standard with one of each rare, one of each uncommon, and maybe one to two or two to three of a few commons is simply not likely to create a remotely viable deck, let alone a brand new player. And by the way, I am not talking about somehow building a top tier professional deck just something that has a chance at being even remotely competitive. A reasonable beginner's deck that gives them at least a chance at a few wins at Friday Night Magic. The contents of this toolkit aren't teaching new players about the very basics of deck construction. 
If you want to teach new players about the very basics of deck construction, at least give them three to four of some commons and uncommons. Those are the tools they need. With this selection, they are practically making a singleton deck, and that's not something I'd want to take to Friday Night Magic, let alone as a new player. What about those booster packs? In regards to the 2015 toolkit, I find it highly frustrating that Dragon's Maze was included as one of the booster packs at all. Why? Not only is Dragon's Maze the weakest of the Ravnica block, and least likely to have cards suitable for standard play, let alone cards with lasting cash value, but it is also from the block that is rotating out in just a few months. So if I'm a brand new player with no collection at all and limited funds, one of my boosters being included has a very near expiration date on it. What would I spend my money on instead of a deck builder's toolkit? The first alternative is to buy an event deck. This is tricky because the event decks are not always good. I would have pointed new players towards the Underworld Herald when it came out, but not the M15 Clash Pack, and certainly not Wrath of Mortals. As of the making of this video, however, most of the Underworld Herald cards are about to rotate out, so while it would still serve you well for summer, it's got a very near expiration date. Let's wait and see what the next event deck is. I've got a good feeling about it. Obviously, you'll need to check around and see if the current event deck is competitive enough to be worth buying. But if the overwhelming consensus is that it is, then that's the first thing I'd point at instead of a deck builder's toolkit. It's a couple more dollars, but it's more worth it than this. And there's other options as well, such as saving that money for a pre-release or launch event, or just going to a couple drafts instead. Final conclusion? While financially the equivalent of $20, if not a few dollars more, the Deck Builder's Toolkit is not an effective tool for new players. All it is getting you is a handful of commons and uncommons, as well as four booster packs, one of which is about to rotate out of standard. I have zero confidence that a new player could build anything worthwhile from this to take to Friday Night Magic. They would do better to buy an event deck or to have a friend help them buy the singles they need for a budget standard deck. They could also benefit from spending that money on a pre-release, launch, or a couple of drafts, or even just buying six packs of cards to start their collection and practice by making a sealed pool. Experienced players might be able to cobble together something more clever from this deck builder's toolkit, but ultimately they are getting four boosters for $20. Don't let tricks like the Terra Stomper mislead you. It's a $1 to $2 rare if you buy the Zendikar version. I hope this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, share, like, or just by leaving a comment. And remember, you can't play Magic at Target or Walmart, so whether buying a deck builder's toolkit, an event deck, or just some packs, make sure to do so at your local game store whenever possible. You're supporting your Magic community.